Mr Agnew, please. Thank, thank you, Chairman. I, I'm addressing my remarks purely to the Irish um, farmer's rep representative. Uh, during his presentation, several times he talked about climate change and being, things being carbon neutral. And I just wonder if his organisation and his farmers in Ireland have discussed amongst themselves what that really means, because it means to reduce CO2 output, they must use their tractors less. It means if they want to reduce methane output, they will effectively have to keep fewer cattle. If they need to reduce their nitrous oxide emissions, they will have to grow fewer legumes, which is clover in Ireland, which is a very big crop. And I must wonder if this has been thought through, whether the money you might get instead of this isn't going to cover the drop in output that you, you, will, expect having, you will expect to get from having to do it. Thank you. For my colleague from the UK who asked the question, again, as I say, I'm speaking here as rapporteur of the NAT opinion, but certainly we believe there are huge opportunities for farmers to play a positive role in carbon sequestration, the protection of biodiversity, the protection of hedgerows, landscape areas, and we also very clearly, and the UN acknowledges this, that a lot of the grass-based production in Europe has a much lower carbon footprint, no more than speakers on my left here. Trade deals will result in huge carbon leakage, and the, car and the EU EU Commission in the last few weeks came out with a report to show that with the increased demand for food, if we lost all the ovine sheep in Europe and all the beef in Europe, there would be a huge increase in world global emissions. So there is no benefit whatsoever in undermining European production. And we should never forget, as some of the speakers said, that we have 500 million people here in Europe to feed, plus a growing world population.